Tom Rob Smith's first novel five years ago was an instant hit. Child 44 was a detective thriller set in Stalin's Russia. It spawned two sequels and it's currently being filmed. His latest book, The Farm, is rather different. It's a literary thriller set in Sweden. And, among other things, it's about madness, fairy stories and the corrosive effects of secrecy. Tom Rob Smith, who also writes television scripts and film screenplays, is himself half Swedish. And there's more than a touch of autobiography about the farm. Uh, Tom Rob Smith, let's start with the opening scenario of this book. What's the situation at the beginning? Yeah, the main character, Daniel, um, lives in London. His parents have retired to Sweden. Uh, his mum's Swedish, his dad's English, they retired to a farm in the middle of nowhere. And everything seems to be very happy, and Daniel is oblivious to everything going on. When he gets a call from his father saying his mum has been institutionalised, she's in an asylum, she's mad, he needs to fly out immediately, which he then sets about doing. Uh, and on the way to the airport, he then gets a call, which he thinks is from his father, it turns out to be from his mother. And his mother has, has left the hospital. She convinced the doctors that she's fine, and she tells Daniel that everything his father has told him is a lie and that she is perfectly sane and that his father is involved in a criminal conspiracy which involves the community in Sweden. And she comes to London, they go to his apartment and she tells him this elaborate story and the question throughout the book is, is she suffering from paranoid, paranoid delusions or is there really a conspiracy? That's exactly it. I mean, it, it, who do you believe, your mother or your father? And then is she right or is she, is she wrong? Did she, is she imagining things or is there really something terrible at the heart of this? Your publishers are calling this a literary thriller, and a, it is a thriller. There's a, a kind of a, a, a narrative thread, you know, we're trying to get at the truth. But it's also very literary in, in several ways. One is that um, we have not one but two unreliable narrators, the things beloved of literary novelists. The mother who tells much of the story is clearly potentially an unreliable narrator, but so too is, is the son, Daniel, who, is, who narrates the sort of overarching uh, structure of the book. Yeah, there are two first-person narratives in it. You've got the two voices. And in a sense, Daniel's first-person narrative is a, it's a traditional first-person narrative, someone talking um, about things that are happening. The mother's is raw speech being directed right at the son, as we're talking right now. It's meant to really capture the immediacy of first-person, very different, I think, to, the, to Daniel's first-person. But I actually think it's impossible to write any first-person that doesn't deal with the question of reliability just think it's impossible to put down this voice and not try and work out what's behind the voice, where the cracks are, what the voice is missing, what the voice hasn't seen. I mean, I just think that question has to be answered for any first person. And I mean, very, yes. very obviously, Daniel, there are, as we discover, there are things about his upbringing, his parents and so on, that he was never told, that he never understood. Yeah, I love that about this story, is that in a sense, when, he, when, the, when the mother comes to him, he's really not just um, unsure whether she's mad or not, he's just unsure of her character. He realises so much he doesn't know about her. There's so much he doesn't know about um, his father. And there's, in a sense, this sort of cultivated ignorance about your parents. And I love that idea of growing up but then, and having spent so much time with these people, but never asked some really fundamental questions about where they came from, the things they've experienced, the darkness in them, as well as the happiness. Um, your publishers obviously have a lot of faith in this book. They've spent um, money on great big advertising posters. I saw one on the tube this morning on the way in. And there's also a very elaborate um, uh, cinema-style trailer, which I think all your uh, publishers have um, contributed to, and which you yourself, because you know people in the television business, um, uh, 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 undertook to produce. Everything your father told you is a lie. What happened? I must warn you. If you refuse to believe me, I will no longer consider you my son, oh. just as I no longer consider that man to be my husband. And one of the things that comes across from the trailer is that this is set in Sweden, and there's a sort Tell of. Me. You could be accused of climbing onto the sort of Swedish noir bandwagon. But in fact, this story has a very real, autobiographical, personal start, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, the story itself is a fiction. None of these characters are real, but the premise I experienced, which is I was working on uh, my novel Age of the Six when I got a call from um, my dad, and they had moved to Sweden. They'd been there in the real in the real events. They'd been there for a couple of years, so this really did come out of the blue. 
and he said that my mum had been institutionalised, I need to fly over. And exactly as I just described, I made preparations to go over when I got a call from my mum saying everything my dad was telling me was a lie. And she flew to London and I met her at the airport thinking uh, I would know immediately, it would be self-evident that she was ill. And she came out of the, you know, the, the doors at the, the arrivals lounge and I just, I didn't know. She was this brilliant storyteller. She was very convincing. Nothing she said was implausible. Um, and it was very hard for me to be sure what the truth was. Not everybody would have turned an experience like that into fiction. What do your parents think of the book? Well, they were involved in reading it in the sense they read the first draft, and then they met my publisher and my agent. We had a big kind of conversation about it, and then they were involved in the sort of revising and the final draft. I think the real key was that this is a, I mean, this is a positive story. This is about optimism and recovery, and this is about, um, I think the message, the takeaway is an uplifting one. And I think that is one that I think they were keen to get across as well. In many ways, that the whole event for me personally brought us much closer. I drifted apart from my mother um, for lots of different reasons. Um, your first book, Child 44, which is a thriller set in Stalinist Russia, um, uh, was then followed up by two successive books, and um, it's being filmed currently, produced by Ridley Scott. It's been filmed. It's now in, in post-production. It's out later this year. Um, uh, some of the critics slightly unkind of critics of your uh, um, earlier novels have said that they read more like screenplays than novels. Now, you are, of course, a screenwriter. You wrote television drama, you've written screenplays yourself. This one, it seems to me, it would be very difficult to film. Yeah, I mean, I think that because this book is about storytelling in a way... I mean, this, you know, I tried to think about what, why I became a writer. I mean, people always think about that question. And I used to love, as a child, hearing people tell me stories. I think, in a sense, that was my first encounter with narrative. And so this story, in a sense, goes back to that. This is a mother talking to a son in the same position that we are right now and trying to convince them of something which is exciting and scary and all these different things. And I was, So in a sense, I was going back to that very sort of, um, I don't know, that sort of instinct with my storytelling. And that is harder in cinema, you know. I mean, it's hard to get across narrative storytelling as, as a sort of verbal thing rather than visual. And also it's harder to bring in the question of reliability. I mean, visual, you tend to trust the image. What are you playing? You're you showing the audience something that isn't real. It's a very hard game to play. Having said that, it, is, it has been an option for for movie. I think it's a great part for, a, 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 for an actress. Um, so I think it will be a difficult adaptation, but we'll see whether it, whether it hits the big screen or not. Tom Rob Smith, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.